this year and next year will prove to be the warmest on record. You may rise, uh, raise an eyebrow at that if you're one of those who asks what happened to our summer. But that's what research by the Met Office shows and Professor Dame Julia Slingo is their chief scientist. And she's on the line. Good morning to you. Good morning, John. Um, the warmest, really? Absolutely, yes. And uh, we think, well, very likely to be the warmest. Obviously, there's still some way to go and, and there's always uncertainty in the observations. But this is an absolutely in line with what we predicted at the end of last year, that this year could well be, if not the warmest, one of the very warmest. And then again next year. And again next year. And the reasons for that are because we have a major El Nino event developing in the tropical Just remind Pacific us what the El Nino is, that's the current. That's a current, it's a warm current that produces abnormally warm water along the Peruvian coast, spreading out across the equatorial Pacific. Uh, we're currently running two and probably three degrees warmer than average, which for those parts of the world is very significant. And we know that that disturbs weather patterns around the world and we're already seeing that. Um, and it also elevates global mean surface temperature quite significantly. And, and what you're saying, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, because of the CO2 trapped in the atmosphere, more of it than there used to be, Absolutely. Uh, it, that heat will not be able to escape in the way that it might have done a thousand years ago. That's not part of what we're discussing here. We're discussing, uh, we know that the heat is continually being trapped in the system and we know that th when we look at things like sea level rise. And we've known over the last decade that probably more of the heat has been trapped below the surface of the ocean and therefore not seen in such a rapid rise in global surface temperatures as we've seen in the past. What we're now reporting are some quite big changes in the climate system and heat, that heat that was trapped below the surface is now re-emerging not only in El Nino but across the North Pacific and leading now to quite uh, big increases in global mean surface temperature. But so we're warming again, very, very much so. Well, we're warming again because the other warmings that didn't happen in the way that uh, I think <clears throat> it's safe to say were predicted, um, why, why were those, I don't know whether you'd accept the word <laughs> mistakes, but I mean, why were those forecasts prove not to be totally accurate. I mean, a lot of people say, including some distinguished scientists, yes. um, these are based on um, computer predictions. You know, the, 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 it's all done on computers, and sometimes we simply get it wrong. Well, what we have to remember is that the, the Earth has its own natural variability, often on 10-year, 20-year cycles. And therefore, we, we wouldn't expect something like global warming to be just a continuous warming process. It's overlaying uh, these natural cycles. And the one we're talking about a lot at the moment is what we call the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, which was in its cold phase for at least the last decade or so. But didn't you know that was going to happen? I mean, couldn't uh, we have been told about that so we weren't, we weren't sort of told we were all going to bake uh, and then when we didn't <laughs> bake, people said, well, actually, it, it hasn't happened and they were called climate change deniers. Well, I think the fact of the matter is, John, that these low-frequency low uh, variations in the ocean circulations are actually still very hard to predict. And certainly 10, 15 years ago, we wouldn't have had the observations of the current state of the ocean and indeed a, an understanding of how these deep ocean circulations move heat around the system. What we've learned in the last 15 years is that actually the ocean's playing a huge role in these decadal changes in the rate of warming. But we shouldn't use those to say that the world is still uh, is, is not warming because of greenhouse gases. We have a lot of evidence to show that the world has continued to accumulate energy, that the Arctic sea ice is still declining, that sea levels are rising. And uh, global mean surface temperature is quite a difficult variable to, to talk about because we get these natural variations showing up in the temperature record alongside the warming trend, which has not gone away. Professor Slingo, thanks a lot.